Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Serazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session guys, we're going to be talking about multiple thermal changes and using both the energy is equal to mass times by the specific latent heat and energy is equal to the mass times by the specific heat capacity times by the temperature change. Right, okay, and obviously before watching this video, make sure you fully understand the specific heat capacity equation, which is this one over here, and that you also understand the specific latent heat equation over here because your understanding of both those concepts are going to be needed in this lesson here. And guys, as always, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Okay, so this whole concept is best explained by actually doing a question here. So let's look at a question together. If 0.5 kilograms of water at 80 degrees Celsius is changed into steam at 100 degrees Celsius, how much energy will be used? Right, so at the start, this looks quite tricky. But first of all, all you need to do is identify the changes taking place for the water. So we're going to start off with water, and we know initially that it's going to be 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, right, so the first change is going to be, you're going to increase the temperature of water up to 100 degrees Celsius. So this is our first change, so water will go up to 100 degrees Celsius. From here, it will then change state. So don't forget, the water will then change state into steam, if you give it some energy. And look, it remains at the same temperature. Don't forget, there's no change in temperature when it's changing state. And then finally, guys, it will then go from steam. You're going to increase its temperature again. So therefore, it reaches 110 degrees Celsius. Here we go. Right, so that's the first thing to do, identify the steps. So look, we need some energy to do this process over here. We also need some energy to do this process over here. We also need some energy to do this process over here. So the total energy I need is going to be the addition of all three energies here. Okay, so let's look at the energy required for the first stage. Well, we've got to use the specific heat capacity equation. Energy is equal to the mass times by the specific heat capacity times by the temperature change. Don't forget we're changing temperature here. The mass, 0.5. The specific heat capacity is the specific heat capacity of water times by 4200 times by the temperature change. I'm going from 80 to 100. So therefore it's 20 degrees over here. Let's work this out. 0 0.5 times by 4200 times by 20. I'm going to get the answer of 42000 joules for the first one. Right, okay, what about the next transition from water into steam? Well, we are changing state now, so we can't use the previous equation. We have to use the specific latent heat equation. So energy is equal to the mass times by the specific latent heat. So therefore, the mass is going to be 0.5. Now, the specific latent heat, which one am I going to use? Is it fusion or vaporization? Well, look, we're going from water to steam, so it's the vaporization one. So 0.5 times by 2260000, and that value is going to be, it's going to be 11300040 zero, 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 over here. There we go, so we've found this energy. Right, what about the last transition? Right. As you are changing temperature, we've got to use the specific heat capacity equation again. So E is equal to mc delta theta. So the energy you've got is how much? All right, so the mass 0.5, but now it's steam. So I've got to use the specific heat capacity of steam. So times by 1859 times by the temperature change, it's going to be 10 degrees. So the energy is going to be, it's going to be 9295 joules over here. Right, so the total energy is going to be the addition of these three together. So if we add them up, this plus this plus this, what do we get? I'm getting the value of 1181295 joules. And that's my answer, guys. Tricky question, everyone. Yes, but look, we've got to be able to be confident with the specific heat capacity and the specific latent heat equation. Make sure you're happy with the use of both of them. Okay, right, let's try an even harder question. Let's try it. Question, what is the final temperature of one kilogram of water at 75 degrees Celsius when it is heated with 2.5 megajoules? Once again, I've got all the data over here, but the first thing I should do is I should identify the stages. Right, so we had water, and initially it's at 75 degrees, uh, and then we're going to heat it up. It's going to go to water at 100 degrees Celsius, and then from there, it's then going to change state to steam at 100 degrees Celsius, and then finally, guys, it's going to travel even further, yes? Yeah? So obviously the steam is going to increase in temperature again, uh, but we don't know the final temperature. We don't know the final temperature here. Right, so first of all, 
we're giving this much energy, yes? We're giving this much energy, so some of that energy is going to be used for the first process and the second process, and the rest of the energy will be for the last process. Because we're giving this much energy here, therefore I have to subtract uh, the energy taken from the first stage and the second stage, and the leftover energy will be used over here. And with that value, I can then calculate the temperature change, and therefore the final temperature. Okay, so let's do it very slowly. So the first stage, what is the energy here? So the energy I need is going to be m c delta theta. The mass is 1 times by the specific heat capacity of water, 4200 zero, zero, times by the temperature change. The temperature change is 25. Yes, 75 to 100. Let's do that in the calculator. I'm getting the answer of 105000 zero, zero, zero joules. Now, for the next change in states, this is going to be this is going to be energy is equal to mass times by the specific latent heat of vaporization. Yes, so it's vaporization. So it's going to be 1 times by 2260000, zero, 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 which remains the same as 2260000. Zero, 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 zero. Easy stuff, and that's how much energy is used for this process. Right, the last process, how much energy is going to be used here? Well, we don't have the final temperature, but I can find out how much energy is required by simply taking the 2.5 megajoules and subtracting these two from it. That will tell me the energy left over for this process. So let's do that. So let's go 2.5 megajoules is the same as 2,500,000. There we go. Minus 10,5,0,0,0. Minus 2,2,6,0,0,0,0. How much energy is that left over? I'm getting the energy left over from it is going to be 135000 joules. That's this much energy over here. That's the energy over here. Right, so now we know the energy. Uh, we're going to use the specific heat capacity equation again, mc delta theta. Right, now we've got the energy because that is the energy which we're going to be using over here. And we already have the mass. We've got the specific heat capacity of the steam, which is over here. We're going to work out the temperature change. So delta theta is equal to E divided by M times by C at the bottom. So the energy 135000 divided by the mass. The mass of it was going to be, it's still one kilogram times by the specific heat capacity of the steam, which is going to be 1859 over here. What is that temperature change? I'm going to get 72.62 degrees Celsius. So that is the temperature change. Well, what is the final temperature? That's what the question was asking me. So you know it was at 100 degrees. It's then going to increase its temperature by 72.62 degrees Celsius. Therefore, the final temperature is simply going to be 100 degrees Celsius plus the 72.62 degrees Celsius. We're going to get 172.62 degrees Celsius. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so this was a tricky concept, guys, and loads of kids struggle with this, but make sure that you try and work it through yourself, yes? Obviously, the first thing you should do is obviously identify the stages, and then you've got to get the maths right. Pull out the right data as well, yes? So you have to pull out the right data in your calculations. But you should be able to get through this, you know? Once you've seen a couple of examples, you should be able to crack it yourself. And that's it for another session of some Razzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going, and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.